Thanks for joining me today. I'm Diane May, and I'm the Associate Dean of the Terrorism and Counterterrorism Program here at Henley Putnam University. Today, we will be discussing a few of the challenges behind defining the term terrorism. First, we will look at the terminology behind the term terrorism. Next, we will discuss the history of terrorism and how the term is used today. After that, we will look at the various definitions proposed by the United Nations, U.S. governmental organizations, as well as scholars in the field. Finally, we'll close with an exercise designed to get you to think about whether or not various actions are terrorist in nature or they fall into another category of violent activity. It's often been said that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. This is a cliché, but it describes the problem of defining what terrorism truly is. Academics, politicians, security experts, the armed forces, and journalists all use a variety of definitions of terrorism. Some definitions focus on the terrorist organization's mode of operation. Others emphasize motivation and yet others focus on the characteristics of the person who is perpetrating the terrorist act. The word itself comes from the Latin word to frighten. The word terrorism was first recorded in English language dictionaries in 1798, where it was described as a governmental policy. Fast forward to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, you'll find that many anarchist and revolutionary groups embraced the term terrorism. But since World War II, it's carried a much more negative connotation. The prevalent definitions of terrorism entail many difficulties from both a conceptual and a literal standpoint. It's not surprising that you often hear a group described with more positive connotation depending on who is describing the group. For instance, you may hear a terrorist organization called a guerrilla fighting organization or a resistance front or a national liberation movement. Likewise, you may hear these same groups called terrorists. But at what point is a group a terrorist organization? At what point is a person a terrorist? What exactly is terrorism? How do you know when you're faced with terrorist activity, a civil disorder, a rebel group, or an act of war? Throughout the years, there have been many organized groups that assassinate high-level politicians and military members. This is typically what was thought of as terrorism prior to the 20th century. During the revolutionary period in France, there was actually a period of violence so deadly that thousands of innocent civilians were condemned to death. This reign of terror was actually a policy by the government against the people. The 21st century definition has completely reversed. Today, it's typically viewed as an action against a standing government, not an action by a government. There is no general consensus as to how to define terrorism. This is partially because the term is politically loaded. For instance, a group may be labeled a resistance organization or a separatist movement at one point in time, but as the political situation changes, they can be labeled a terrorist organization. Likewise, the same group may be labeled a terrorist organization by one country, but a resistance movement by another. Similarly, legitimate organizations may use the same tactics as terrorist organizations. First, let's talk about some of the scholarly definitions of terrorism. Now, many scholars have offered definitions of this word. In fact, over 150 definitions of the word were found by the University of Southern California. These three come from some of the most prominent scholars in the terrorism field. Alex Schmid was one of the first scholars to offer a definition of the term terrorism when he said that terrorism is the peacetime equivalent of a war crime. Do you agree with P Professor Schmid? Why or why not? In 2004, Bruce Hoffman, one of the world's leading experts in terrorism, has given us a more nuanced definition of the term. He described it as political inane, violent, 
and conducted by organizations with an identifiable chain of command or a cell structure. He said it was perpetrated by a subnational group or non-state entity. Finally, the famous Israeli scholar Boaz Ganor offers a very simple definition of the term when he says terrorism is the deliberate use of violence aimed against civilians to achieve political ends. Many terrorist acts cross international boundaries, so the UN definition is important to study. It's been said when you are defining a word, you should never use that word in your definition. This is extremely hard to do with the term terrorism, as you can see here in the UN's definition of the word. Pay close attention to the UN's use of the word criminal in this definition. This is an important distinction. Later, we will see how another organization directly contradicts this element of the UN's definition. These next two definitions come from two very important governmental organizations in the United States, both of which have a role in countering terrorist activity. The first comes from the Department of Defense. Pay close attention to some of the specific words that are used here in describing terrorism. This next definition comes from the State Department, which has the challenging role of protecting U.S. embassies overseas and promoting the policies of the United States abroad. What do you think the State Department means by influence and audience? Two other U.S. government agencies that are directly involved with countering terrorist activity are the FBI and the CIA. Notice how their definitions of terrorism are slightly different from those of the DOD and the State Department. First, let's look at the FBI's definition. Notice how the FBI definition includes violence against property. Now let's look at the CIA's definition. Which elements stick out? Did you notice here that the CIA says terrorism is not criminal, whereas the UN defines terrorism as a criminal act? Which definition do you think captures the meaning of terrorism? This is a list of the elements of terrorism taken from the previous slides. Some of these elements were located in more than one definition. As you can see, some of them actually contradict each other. For instance, as we said before, the UN defines terrorism as criminal activity, whereas the, U whereas the CIA defines it as non-criminal. The DOD definition is the only one that includes the element of instills fear. The DOD and the FBI both see terrorism as unlawful. The CIA, the State Department, both agree that terrorism is premeditated, targets non-combatants, and it's subnational in nature. The State Department, FBI, CIA, DOD, as well as scholars Hoffman and Gnor, all agree that the motive is typically political or ideological. Now, there is something missing from, a, from most of the terrorism literature. The element of surprise is a principle of war highlighted by the major theorists from Sun Tzu to Karl von Clausewitz. I think this is missing from much of the literature. 
terrorists are quite good at capitalizing on the element of surprise. In warfare, shock and confusion are induced by the deliberate or incidental introduction of the unexpected. This element of surprise can decisively shift the balance of power in warfare. The same can hold true for a terrorist attack. This next slide lists some of the most violent activity that has taken place worldwide over the past decade. I've categorized these attacks as attacks on mass transportation, separatist groups fighting a regime, and mass shootings. As you're looking at this list of events and the actions below, I want you to think, are these terrorist acts, crimes, civil disorders, or acts of war? Why? See if each of these matches the elements listed by the various organizations in the U.S. that deal with terrorism. Did they instill fear? Are they unlawful? Were the acts premeditated? Were the targets non-combatants? Were these perpetrated by non-state actors? Was the, move, was the motive political or ideological? Pay special attention to the separatist groups fighting regime. For instance, when the Free Syrian Army fights the regime of Bashar al-Assad, are they considered to be terrorists? For many Western journalists, the answer is no, because the FSA is targeting enemy combatants. But what about when the al-Nusra Front fights, Assad, fights Assad's regime? Are they a terrorist organization? Well, it depends. Sometimes groups may take actions that are really acts of war, but at some point in time they were involved in terrorist activity, so they're considered a terrorist organization. In this case, the al-Nusra Front may, may be involved in a civil war on the one hand, but they're considered a terrorist organization because of the other activities they've been involved with. Now let's take a look at mass shootings. Think back to the Fort Hood shooting of 2009, when Major Nidal Hassan fatally shot 13 people and injured 30 others at a military base in Texas. The Fort Hood massacre instilled fear. It was unlawful, and it was premeditated. The FBI later uncovered emails between Nidal Hassan and a Yemeni cleric named Anwar al-Awlaki, showing that this was a politically motivated attack. There is some question as to whether or not Major Hassan's targets could be considered non-combatants. He targeted military personnel, but those personnel were not openly engaged in combat during the time of the attack. How is the Fort Hood massacre different than when Adam Lanza fatally shot 20 children at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut? Adam Lanza instilled fear. He conducted a premeditated attack on non-combatants, and it was a surprise but we're unsure what his motives were. This is the key difference. Unlike Major Hassan, we do not believe that Adam Lanza's motives were political in nature. As we conclude, I want you to think about the definition of terrorism that you think is the most appropriate and why. What do you think should change about the definition? Do you have your own definition that you think would better describe what terrorism really is? Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in more terrorism lectures. Thank you.